So the losing strategy, like I say, is to listen to the insults and the half-truths and to fight back and try and defend yourself. This is a losing strategy. The, the right strategy is to look at the insults and look at how it's hurting you and why it's hurting you and address that according to getting counselling for yourself or getting into the Word of God and seeing what the Word of God says about me. Seeing what the Word of God says. If, if I'm acting the best way I know how, if I'm acting according to the will of God, if I'm doing what I feel God called me to do. Who, what man can judge me? Paul says, who, who can judge him? He judges himself. Paul says, uh, for me, um, all things are permissible, but not all things are good. Paul's saying that he could choose to sin, but it's not a good thing for him to do. Okay, so my losing strategy is to be on this blog, I've tried to defend myself, I've tried to talk reason. People have quoted scripture verse after scripture verse at me and brought all sorts of sadness to my life and I just doesn't seem, I, the end of it I start to think I didn't even know scripture, I wasn't even smart, intelligent, but the people that attack me are very intelligent, they're very used to levelling attacks at people through their unbelief. You can't talk with a fool, Jesus says. You can't reason with a fool. Now, am I calling them fools? I'm saying that they've made their level best efforts to cause, cause me uh, hurt. Now, I think some of their motives are pure. They believe that uh, me prophesying over Todd Bentley was an error, and God couldn't have possibly say nice things over Todd Bentley. And so they're very angry about that and want me to repent. Now, um, you can't argue with a person who says what you're doing is wrong. When you're directed by God to do it, it's, you know, the wisdom of God is foolishness to men. When men call you a fool because something you've done, there's a good chance you acted in God's wisdom. I don't know anyone that goes down to an ocean and hits it with a staff and the ocean parts. But when Moses needed that to happen, Jesus, God told him to do it, and it did part. That's foolishness to men. The idea of uh, asking an axe, an, an axe head to float is foolishness. To men, that seems foolish. Even, even if they saw it actually happened, that deny that it actually happened, that it was witchcraft or some sort of hallucination. People who are bound in unbelief, people who say that there are no miraculous things happening, there is no healing happening, there's no gifts of the Spirit, there's no prophets, there's no apostles. When they're convinced through their theologies and doctrines that these things don't exist, when they see the evidence of these things, they call it witchcraft and evil and uh, they, they, they gather around the evidence of uh, when he said a miracle did happen and the person died, supposed to have been healed and they died, they, they jump on that and they say this is evidence that the person wasn't healed and uh, the healer is a charlatan, the healer is a liar, the healer is... Uh, you know, I've met people who lie, I've met people who've done things wrong, I've met people who have made errors of judgment and still been beautiful people of God. Uh, if, if people are saying accusations that you, you need to go to the Word of God, you need to go to your pastor and discuss what they're saying. Someone who loves you, someone who's your shepherd. Is if you're getting attacked all sorts of ways, you need to if you're out in an ocean and you're getting attacked all sorts of ways and, and you, haven't, you haven't got the weapons on board to sink the people who are attacking you, it's, it's not good to stay out in the ocean getting attacked. The best strategy is to sail back into a safe harbour where you can get repair. Uh, through, the, through the last few weeks of enormous attack in my life, I've come to realize the safest place is in the arms of Jesus and under the counsel and shepherding of my pastor. A losing strategy is to keep on fighting a battle you can't win. 
when Satan has marshaled four or five or six or ten people against you, when he's feeding them or the Holy Spirit or whatever's feeding them a whole lot of things to say against you, to, to level at you, to lobby, lobby uh, missiles at you. The losing strategy is to try and deflect all the missiles and talk reason to these people. That's, in spiritual warfare, that's been my losing strategy. I've tried to talk reason. Every time I've leveled something, it's hurt me more. My winning strategy is to retreat. There's no dishonor in retreat. Plenty of major armies in the world, in the history of the world, have retreated when they've known their army is going to get wiped out and they're going to face defeat. Putting your hands up and saying, peace, we give up, is smart strategy. Many armies have, have flown a white flag and, and given up in the history of the world. That's proven to be the best strategy. I'm officially retreating. I'm officially going on holidays and entering a, a stage of counselling, a stage of safe harbour. I'm going to see who I really am in Christ. I'm going to change the misconceptions and the ideas that I have. I can't say that I'm particularly happy with the people who've attacked me. I can't say that I'm at a stage where I'm bubbling over with love for these people. In all honesty, uh, in all honesty, I've got a lot of unbridled anger within myself. And people say that uh, a person on the net has been counselling me that I've got to take my anger out. I've got to diffuse my anger so that I can get to the pain that it's caused me, what they've said, and then I've got to cry the pain out. She said both getting the anger out and crying the pain out is going to be very painful for me, but it must be done to get all the wickedness out of me, to get the effect of the attack out of me. So I've got a lot of work to do. But let me be frank and let me be very honest. If, if, if murder wasn't a sin, if I couldn't put, get put away for murder, if this Mark Cunningham was in front of me, I'd kill him. Now, you can say that's found with unforgiveness, that I certainly agree with you. I'm not at a stage in my life where I can forgive him. I'm very, very, very angry with him. If I was a person, if he was living in my country, it's only the murder charge, it's only the assault charge, it's only going to a psychiatric ward or going to prison that would stop me from doing him serious damage. Which makes me happy that we've got laws in our world. I, I think I'm happy that there's assault laws. You can be charged with criminal assault and battery and you can be charged with murder because if those laws didn't exist in our world, a lot of people would be getting killed and bashed. I know if it's preventing me, it's preventing a lot of people. Going to prison and getting bashed and raped and stuff isn't something that's on my agenda. So not something that turns me on so no matter how angry I get I've got to suppress that anger well all my life I've suppressed that anger and it's one of the causes of depression is suppressed anger I don't want to be depressed anymore and as a manic depressive or bipolar I'm prone to that so I want to walk away from that so I'm taking the counsel of godly people and sitting under the counsel of my pastor I'm going to find, but my pastor's going to show me how to express my anger in a healthy way. My pastor's going to teach me how what this woman said I need to do is cry out my pain, cry out my hurt for what's been leveled against me. These are winning strategies. This is what the counsel of godly men. It says in the Proverbs, it, it's wisdom to accept the counsel of godly people. Um, it conversely says, uh, you're a fool if you hang around with fools. Mark Cunningham is a foolish person.